I know that I have driven the nail pretty hard on the abortion issue in this nation. And I've recently just been putting out some really tough knowledge and some really hard truth that's been difficult for many people to hear. And now that you've heard it, you can't unhear it, and I'm sure you'll never forget it. And my point in doing that was simply to help people understand this one very important fact that God does not bless sin. He judges it. And unless this nation repents, no man, no man can fix anything. And God will not bless the sin of this nation. He will judge it. So now that I feel like I have fully pulled that issue out of the dark pit and into the light, I'm going to put that to bed now and move on to some more important things that are coming our way with this new administration. Because the Bible prophecy clock is still ticking and is centered around this coming peace deal with Israel. And I am truly hopeful that this great divide in the body of Christ will cease. And now we will all come together and just watch and wait and see what happens and see what unfolds as we continue to wait for the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one we were waiting for before all this. And I'm going to start pushing hard on what's happening globally because this tells us exactly where we are on God's end times clock, which by the way, did not stop ticking on election day. In fact, it seems to suddenly have gained momentum and God's will and kingdom is now coming like lightning speed. And so many people this whole time have asked me, well, why are you never talking about Harris? Because that devil is obvious. The devil behind that, I'm not calling her a devil, but the devil behind that is the obvious one. It's the one that you don't see that you need to pay attention to. It's the one that comes in the name of everything that looks holy at face value. I mean, it's no secret that Harris seems quite depraved. And you may not agree with this, and you may not understand it, but the left was the decoy to push you toward the right. Nevertheless, it's God who chose, who is seated as the leader of this country for his own intents and purposes, not ours. And I do pray for Donald Trump, but if he is the Christian man that he says he is, then he will call this nation to repentance and push everyone toward Jesus Christ and push us toward the instructions of 2 Chronicles 7.14. And please just keep in mind Isaiah 29.13 that says, These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based merely on human rules they have been taught. So we can't just get caught up in things people say and the fact that Jesus is rolling out of their mouth. We must see if they put their faith into action. Because if our leader doesn't call this nation to repent from the sins that we are committing, then our nation is doomed anyways. So now that we are in a new administration in a few months, not even then, because things are happening now before inauguration. So now that we are in this new leadership, it's our responsibility to do our research and to see beneath the surface the things that the media will never tell you. You need to become your own press and look at what's happening in the world. Get your eyes off of America and look at Israel because that is God's prophetic timepiece. So first I want to say that the Bible does not tell us that the Antichrist will suddenly pop out of nowhere and just appear. It says that he rises slowly into power and speaks of the many signs that we will see of his coming. So we must pay attention to this world peace and new age era that Trump and Musk want to usher in. I mean, the fact is, 
all of it looks great at face value. Who doesn't want world peace in this new golden age? But the Bible describes what that really means, what's behind it, and that it actually comes with a cost. A cost of power, control, and utter destruction. And we read in 1 Thessalonians 5.3, For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. I understand that we need the wars to end and we need to have peace, but we need to see what that looks like from a biblical standpoint and the price tag that will be attached to it and what it means for the people of the world. Let's begin with Trump's plans on how he aims to divide Israel. The Jews worship him. They trust him. They put his image on a coin next to Cyrus with the temple on the back, the third temple. They call him the Prince of Peace and their modern day King David. Now, I'm not saying he's the man of sin. I'm saying the fact that he wants to broaden and strengthen the Abraham Accords is setting the stage for the man of sin, whoever that may be. The fact is the Bible is very clear about the Daniel 9, 27 peace deal. And so this is why I'm pushing hard on the issues at hand and what's going on behind the scenes because the devil that we did recognize has just been voted out of office and the devil that you don't know and you don't recognize is on his way. And I'm not gonna deny that Trump was the obvious better choice. I'm just trying to get you to understand that Bible prophecy has not stopped. In fact, I believe this is why God chose Donald Trump to help move Bible prophecy along which seems now that it's gonna happen pretty quickly as we see the onset of global leaders shaking hands with him and all calling for world peace. The Bible refers to the Antichrist as a diplomat who will unite the nations of the world in order to carry out his nefarious schemes. He won't be able to just dance his way into the third temple. He needs the support of the people because we know somebody doing that right now would just cause a full-on war. The Bible also says that the Antichrist will be intelligent and charismatic and create a new world order, which we see suddenly come to pass as we entered into 2020. So for the last four years, this stage has been being set. This man is going to speak eloquently and deceive the masses and he will easily sway people with his promises of peace and security and prosperity, leading the world into utter destruction. And the most important factor in identifying the man of sin, the coming man of sin, will be the relationship that he has with Israel and the trust and love he will gain from them in order to forge his seven-year peace covenant, the one that we read about in Daniel 9, 27. And Donald Trump has stated his strong support for the nation of Israel and that he will come to their defense if they are attacked, but also aiming for a two-state solution, something that God warns that he will judge severely. So this is the very thing that we need to keep our eyes on right now because we know that Donald Trump's plan is peace, is to bring peace. And this is a very biblical thing that is about to happen. So going forward, now that we have a new administration, I am urging and challenging all Christians in the body of Christ, all of us to come together and to be wise and discerning of the time and what is being fostered behind the scenes because this coming peace deal, the 927 covenant with many, is the thing that will kick off the seven year tribulation, Daniel's 70th week, the time of Israel's trouble, also a sign of the church's exit that we read about in 1 Thessalonians chapter four, verses 13 through 18. All good news for believers but bad news for unbelievers. So what do we do now with this knowledge um, of what's coming to the world? 
we focus on the saving gospel of Jesus Christ in this urgent hour, leading people to Jesus and bringing Jesus to people. That's where our focus should be right now as we watch and wait and see things unfold because the tribulation train has now gained quite a bit of speed. So if you're listening to this message and you're not saved, and you've never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, the saving gospel of Jesus Christ, click the link below and watch a five minute video that will change your life forever. Do it now because today is the day of salvation.